Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at the new and improved tablet mode experience in the upcoming Windows 10 anniversary update. Now with the initial Windows 10 launch back in 2015, many users were upset at the tablet mode experience that came with it as it was missing a number of tablet mode features that came before it in Windows 8.1. So with the Windows 10 anniversary update, Microsoft has tried to rectify this by introducing and re-adding a number of features that were present in Windows 8.1 in the first place. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy changes are with the start menu. As you can see, the start menu hasn't really changed on the forefront, but on the left hand side you can see a number of new icons and in fact the hamburger menu found on the start menu has been redesigned. As you can see we've got access to pin tiles and our all apps list. Now the changes are really present in the apps list. The apps list is now much more like the Windows 8.1 apps list as it's you know, no longer confined to the left hand menu that it was in the initial Windows 10 launch. Uh, I can now scroll this app list from any point on the screen, either on the left side here or the right side. So it doesn't matter what hand I'm using now and I can easily just launch an app. So if I want to launch the Maps app here, I'll tap the Maps app and it will launch just like you expect. Now the functionality hasn't changed. I can still do that and I can get uh, an overview of all the apps installed. Tap on T and it'll take me straight to T. And whenever I install an app from the store, it will install straight to the apps list, allowing me to pin it to the start screen afterward, just like it did on Windows 8.1 and the initial Windows 10 launch. Now, not only that, but the hamburger menu here is customizable. The hamburger menu was originally customizable, but since we've now got icons on the start menu at all times, uh, they were kind of a little, little bit more useful. So if we jump into start here, scroll down and choose which folders to appear on start, we can see here I can turn on file explorer, uh, network and downloads. And now as you can see on the start menu or the start screen, sorry, uh, I've now got those icons on the left, which I can easily access with my thumb. So I can jump straight into the File Explorer and look at that. I'm in the File Explorer. Fantastic indeed. Now, another new change is the fact that Microsoft is now allowing users to auto hide the taskbar when in apps, just like on Windows 8.1. Using apps in full screen is kind of what you expect from a tablet, but with the initial Win Windows 10 launch, that was not the case. Finally, look. I can now launch Edge and pretty much every app in tablet mode full screen as I can now get rid of the taskbar. Now it doesn't disappear on the start menu but that's only because a lot of new hardware these days arrives with um, no hardware buttons for the home screen. So it's kind of required here so I can get to places but when in an app I don't need it I can easily swipe up and then hit the start button like that. Or if I have a device with a dedicated home button, just hit the dedicated home button like I'm doing on this Surface Pro 1 here. Now, jumping back into settings, there's a new dark mode. Now this is also for desktops, but it looks pretty cool in tablet mode as well. So if we go into colors here, turn on dark mode, pretty fantastic, right? Especially on a Surface Pro with uh, or any device with a black bezel, it looks pretty good. And a lot of the apps use the, um, dark mode by default so if we jump into calendar doesn't but if we look at um one app that does such as people perhaps yes the people app does very nice a lot of them do and i think it's very nice now of course all your swipe gestures still work swiping in from the left is in fact task view swiping in from the right is the action center swiping down is to close an app and you can still multitask so if we multitask the file explorer here with settings I can do much like you would expect to do on a tablet because it's 2016 and multitasking is a thing. Now the File Explorer hitboxes when in tablet mode are a lot bigger as well as context menus so you can tap them with your finger much more easily. And uh, let's turn the taskbar back on because I like the taskbar unlike some. Uh, and we've also got a new feature called Ink Workspace. Now. This is a feature available on, on desktops as well, but it really shines when you have a tablet, especially with a pen. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a pen to demo pen use, but I, can, I do have a finger, luckily, and I can use my finger to do it instead. So this is Sketchpad. Now, much like OneNote in the initial Windows 10 launch, when tapping on the top of a pen to launch OneNote or you know, to jot down notes. This is the new default way of doing it. This is Sketchpad and it's a basic notating or drawing app. You can do lots of cool drawings here. Doesn't support multi fingers apparently, just one finger at a time. But um, I can take notes, so um, do the dishes. 
like that. I'm not very good at writing with my fingers, as you can see. Then I can save that and save it directly into OneNote, which is fantastic as well. Uh, we've also got screen sketch, which allows me to draw what's currently on screen, draw on what's currently on screen. So I can circle Groove Music, say, nice app. And then I can also, man, my handwriting is atrocious. Then I can say, edge sucks, but it doesn't. But you know, just giving you a demonstration there. Again, I can also send that straight to OneNote and continue editing it. And then I've also got sticky notes, which unfortunately, since I don't have a pen to demo it, I can't write on, but you can in fact write on these with a pen. And Cortana will pick it up and she'll do it with text as well. So if I say, um, uh, wash car on Thursday at 4 p.m. Hopefully, with any luck, She'll recognize, yes, the date. So Thursday at 4 p.m., I'll tap on that and she'll say, add reminder. And now I have that in my reminders. So I can press remind. And she will hopefully remind me. Otherwise, I will forget to wash the car. Fantastic indeed. Now, if we play some music here, let's play this one. Why not? Yes, it's playing. If we jump to the lock screen, you'll notice that there are some new additions to the lock screen. First of which, music controls are now on the lock screen by default. No longer do I have to access them by pressing the volume buttons. It's just there. I can play, pause, skip music, do all that fancy stuff. Tapping on it will apparently do nothing, but of course I can swipe up and stop the music if I would like to, or just press pause on the start lock screen, sorry. Just like so. And Cortana is also available from the lock screen now, which is brand new in the anniversary update. I can use the Hey Cortana command, or I can tap on this um, prompt up here. So I'll just say, hey Cortana. Hey Cortana, what's the weather like today? The forecast shows mostly cloudy skies with a high of 67 and a low of 58. And there you go, there's Cortana telling me the uh, the weather on the lock screen. And like I said, I can tap this up here and we'll give the same function. So if you're not used to using the uh, the voice command, you don't have to use it. So there you have it guys, that's a very quick look at the new and improved tablet mode experience in the Windows 10 anniversary update. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.